Hello friends, welcome back to another awesome day. Day 65 of the 100 days. Today, I'm really excited to start this topic because this is the most topic, gradient descent, because it is fundamental to many machine learning algorithms, especially those involving optimization, like linear regression, logistic regression, neural networks, support vector machines, and deep learning. So you can say it is the backbone of the deep learning. And I really spend a lot of time in organizing this content so that it can be very consumable for all of you. Even for a beginner, it will be very easy. So please stay focused for a few minutes and you will see that it will become a piece of cake for all of us. And also I'll try my best to give you the complete intuition. So in the first session, we will only understand the real intuition so that it can be very interactive for all of us. So without a further ado, let's get started. So the plan of action for gradient descent is that first we will understand the intuition behind this. Then we will understand the types of gradient descent, which is batch gradient descent. Then we have stochastic gradient descent and then we have mini batch gradient descent, right? So let's first understand the intuition behind this. So the definition says gradient descent is a first order iterative optimization algorithm used to find a local minimum of a differentiable function. Okay, let's break down each word of this definition. So the first word is gradient. And what is the meaning of gradient? The literal meaning of gradient is an inclined part of a road or railway, or we can say a slope, right? So let's say you have this. And when we talk about this, right? So you can consider that this inclined part, right? How much it is inclined to this position, right? The degree, the slope, right? So it is known as the gradient. Then the second word is descent. So what is the literal meaning of descent? It is an act of moving downwards, dropping or falling, right? So you can say gradient descent means the act of falling or moving downwards of the slope of this angle, right? Of this gradient which means we can say gradient descent means it is trying to find the local minimum means the lowest point, right? It is trying to find the local minimum by going downwards. I know it is very layman language, but it is what it is, right? Okay. So let's again repeat this definition. Gradient descent is a first order iterative optimization algorithm. What is the meaning of first order? We know in derivation, the first order, then the iterative. So we have learned about the loops, a lot of loops, uh, right? For loop. So iterative means it will repeat it again and again. Then it comes to optimization means to reduce the loss. Then means it is used to find the local minimum, which means this is the function. Then let's say initially if it is here, then it is trying to find this point, the local minimum, right? And one more important thing that it should be differentiable function, right? So these are a few words which you should be uh, keep in mind while dealing with the gradient descent. Okay, so let's take another real life example of the gradient descent. So you must have seen with due respect, so many blind people. So they do not have any vision power. But if you have observed, then they have other senses more advanced, more stronger. So if any person which is lack of any one sense, then definitely his or hers other senses will be more stronger. So when the blind people walk on a road or anywhere, then they are able to check the slope of the road if there is any road block. So with the help of their stick, they always check in the front that whether it is a clean road or is there any road blocks or whether there is a slope or not. So let's say a blind person is standing here. So what he will do, let's draw this person. So he have a stick in his hand, right? And with the help of stick, he will check the slope, right? So he will touch here and here also. So he is he at this point. So he will touch on both the sides. So he will be able to find that whether it is a plain or it is a hill or it is a valley, correct? So with the help of that, he will be able to decide that I have to go to the downside, right? The downwards because in gradient descent, we are always tending to the local minimum. So he will take a step here and let he comes here, right? Then again, he will touch his stick to the both sides and he will check the slope. So again, if it's a plane, he will stop. If it's downwards or a upwards slope, then again, if it is downwards, then he will go back and 
he will come here so similarly so on so forth he will go and once it is reaches here and if the slope is plain then he will stop there so we can say the checking with the stick of the slope it is known as the iterative process right and that is what the definition says right we have seen in the definition that it is a first order iterative optimization technique right means on each step he is again checking whether it is plain or not if there is any slope then he will again apply his senses and he will decide then okay let's again take another example so let's say you are at this point right and in the first step what we do we start at a random point so it is not fixed that you will be here only you can start at any random point so the first step is start at a random point you begin at a random position on the hill right which is this one the first step then the second is calculate the slope so determine the steepness of the hill at your current position so the blind person he checks with his stick that how much is the steepness is there right so that is the second step so he will check the slope the angle right then the third is take a step move in the direction that goes downhill the size of your step is determined by the steepness and a factor called the learning rate okay so now once the blind person he is able to determine the steepness then he will take a step and the size of the step is determined by two things the first is the steepness right and the second is the learning rate now definitely you must be having a question that what is learning rate so don't worry i'll just explain you in few minutes but for now just understand that the size of the step is determined by the uh, steepness and the learning rate right okay now the fourth point is repeat so again these three steps will be repeated until the steepness becomes the zero the slope becomes zero or we can say we find the local minimum okay so that is the real intuition behind the whole gradient descent algorithm so if you are able to imagine this then i think that you will be able to understand uh, the mathematical side also because it's not that difficult the main thing is this intuition okay so now we have went to stop we have learned already that when the slope or the steepness becomes almost zero then we have to stop so when we talk about the real life application of the gradient descent we can apply this in the optimizing supply chain cost then we can also apply this in the financial modeling and it can be also used in the healthcare we'll discuss all these in future in detail now let's understand that why i am giving the more weightage or the more time on this gradient descent because it is the backbone of the deep learning and it is very useful in many other algorithms like the linear regression logistic regression neural networks support vector machines svm and the deep learning so it becomes crucial to understand this in detail okay so now let's understand the gradient descent in terms of linear regression i know this is applicable in so many other algorithms but for now for the sake of simplicity we will try to understand this with the help of linear regression right so let's say in linear regression uh we take uh, two variables so let's say this is rsi and this is the price so i'll take just four points very basic four points so let's say when the rsi is uh, 10 the price is uh, let's say 50 and when it is 20 the price is 70 18 the price is let's say t7 and when it is 20 it is uh, 80 right so let's say we have four points here 1 2 3 4 okay so in linear regression what we do this is the rsi which is input or we can say the independent variable and this is the price or the output or we can say dependent variable correct so in linear regression what we do we draw a regression line here correct and we know that this is the residual or the error and what we do we try to reduce the square of the error right the distance this is the distance right d1 d2 d3 d4 so what we do we try to minimize this distance uh, to get the precise value because we know that these are the actual points and this is the predicted value correct so 
Okay, so in linear regression, we have seen that to find the yi hat, we have mxi plus b, correct? And we have also seen that the l, the loss is sigma i equals to 1 to n and yi minus yi hat squared. And when we plug the value of yi hat in this formula, we have yi minus mxi minus b squared correct so this is the loss function for linear regression so this is the loss function for the linear regression okay so now we know that this loss is dependent on these two values m and b correct the slope and the intercept so for instance let's take this m any value let's say uh, one okay so this l will become yi minus xi minus b squared correct so now we have values for y we have values for x now we just have to find the value of b and one more thing here this l is dependent on two variables m and b the slope and the intercept we have learned in previous sessions that slope is the like this uh, this movement and when we talk about the intercept it is the uh, horizontal movement right so now we have taken the value of m equals to 1 which means we can say this l is only dependent on the b which means intercept which means this movement will not be possible because we already have the value of m but this movement like let's say we have the intercept here then it can go down also in this way it can be here also and it can be here also like right? only this movement will be there not this rotation right this angular moment right so we know that somehow this l is b squared correct here so we can say that it is something like this like this it's not good let me draw it again let me draw this function here and it is like this correct okay so the first step is to find any random value let's say the blind person is here correct and we know that what is our goal we want to find the local minimum right the lowest value so let's say this is what we want this point right this point this point is required here correct let me draw it with this this is what required right now what the person will do let's say the person is here at this point and he is able to check with his stick that whether the gradient is positive or negative so here we know that the gradient is negative so he will come like this is b right it is negative b and this is positive b so if the gradient is positive then he will come in the opposite direction means he will come in this direction right means the b will and suppose if he was here so here the gradient is positive correct so what he will do he will come in the opposite direction means he will come in the opposite direction of b so here the b is positive so he will come in this direction which means what we can say so here we are only trying to find the b right so we can say b new is equal to b old minus gradient correct because here when we check it was negative right let's say negative 10 then it will be like whatever b old minus 10 b new will be positive means he will come in in this direction right and if it's here then let's say if it is positive 10 then he will come towards this direction means we have to go in the opposite direction of the gradient to find the local minimum now the question is when to stop we have already seen that there are two things on which this is dependent the first is steepness or we can say the gradient right so the first thing is steepness and the second thing is learning rate right so what i can do here i can write b new b old minus learning rate into gradient correct so this is the uh, simple intuition okay now let's move to the mathematical part of this
right? So this was the only intuition. So please try to understand this and watch the video again if you are not able to understand because this was the most important part.